If a plane was the size of a bee, it would never be able to fly. So how is it then that insects fly? To understand this, you have to look at the way that an insect moves its wings. Let's look at a bee. It keeps its body still and moves its wings backwards and forwards. Particularly, it brings its wings forward and throws them up against the flow. Turns its wings around, brings them back, and throws them up against the flow. And it does this over and over again in order to fly. But there's a peculiarity here because when they throw their wings up against the flow like this, they intentionally stall the wing. Now this is weird because when you stall a wing it stops generating any lift. Pilots don't like this, it tends to land the plane very quickly and it takes a long time to pick up all the pieces. So perhaps it comes as no surprise then when people first tried to model insect wings as plane wings, they didn't get a very good answer. And this led to this whole thing in the media that scientists prove bees can't fly, which is of course complete nonsense. All it really proved was that you can't model a bee's wings using plane wings. And this was a terrible misunderstanding of the science. If you'd like to see good interpretations of good science, click my face now to subscribe. See, there's a subtlety in the stool. When the stool first begins, it actually boosts the lift on the wing. Now on a plane, this is fairly academic. For a few moments, it flies a little better, and then all the way into the ground, it flies a lot worse. But you see, a bee is not a plane. A plane keeps its wings still and moves the whole plane, but an insect keeps its body still and only moves its wings. And this allows it to do something rather clever. You see, it brings its wings forward, throws them up against the flow, starts the stall process on its wing, gets the lift boost, and just as that bad bit of stall starts, it turns its wings around, brings them back, and does exactly the same thing again. And in doing so, it's able to knit all the good bits of stool together without ever having to put up with any of the bad. This is how an insect flies. Now, this isn't just some nice to know piece of information. In fact, it's more like need to know only. You see, you can apply this idea to helicopters so that they generate more lift. For a long time, the army was using the idea to give their helicopters an edge. And so this information was classified, which is why it's taken so long to come to the public domain. Because helicopters are able to move their wings and keep their bodies still, it enables them to use a similar trick. See, when a helicopter's moving forwards into the flow, it spins its blade round, moving it faster relative to the flow, and this can begin a stall. The blade then comes round and moves backwards behind the helicopter, moving the blade slower relative to the flow, and this can stop the stall process. And if you consider the way a helicopter moves its blades round and round like this, but you only look at the way it moves forwards and backwards. As it travels round, it's actually moving forwards and backwards in the same way that an insect moves its wings. Now, if you can design the blades just right, you can get them to stall as they spin round and stop as they spin back. And in this way, you can harness exactly the same lift boosting phenomena. Who would have thought that bumblebees would have held weapons grade secrets?